Hello? Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, we, I've got a few props to being on stage here. So uh, here's my uh, lovely girls. You know? <laughs> 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 oh, uh, I've got a rabbit. No. <laughs> So um, the rise and rise of, of Sauvignon Blanc, and um, this is a very interesting topic to me. I mean, as uh, John said, I'm a very proud New Zealander. And uh, as everyone's obviously been to New Zealand who are, are here, yes? Oh. yes? Oh. And the first thing you think about New Zealand probably is... Sheep! Oh my goodness me. I would have thought you thought of the All Blacks like, Kamati, Kamati, Karara, Karara, yeah? I'm sure you would have thought of that. Sauvignon Blanc is another, I think, a in, in wine. So uh, this is me. This is me when I was a young boy. And this is me just recently. Uh, and it uh, shows how proud I am of my country. And I was singing uh, about New Zealand at that time. So, uh, um, so I was... Uh, uh, a chef when I first started training and then uh, from there I traveled I traveled to many different places I traveled uh, all over the world many different continents uh, I went to um, South America to Europe uh, to Asia and um, also to Africa and uh, there's a, a story I'd like to tell you about Africa when I was smuggling oh no I can't tell that story uh, <laughs> Oh, no, the one that when I was in South America, when I was with this young girl, and, oh, no, God, I can't tell you that story. <laughs> um, but uh, the one I want to tell you really is about Sauvignon Blanc and about the rise and rise of Sauvignon Blanc and where it, uh, where it has come from and where it is going. So, and just in case you don't know where New Zealand is, here it is. So the, it's at the middle of the world. If you see the map, New Zealand is always in the middle. <laughs> so... Uh, and, uh, and uh, strangely enough, we are not related to Australia. Please remember that. Um, uh, it's like we're about three to four hours flights away. And so it's like you living in Hong Kong. Oh, you're Japanese. I mean, oh, who said that? You know? So uh, Australians think they're down under, but we're even more down under than Australia. We have the, the city that is the southernmost city in the world. We have the vineyards, which are the southernmost vineyards in the world in, as well. So we, we've, got, we've got this time. I mean, here we are. We are a different country. We have a different nation. But we have a, a sort of, I suppose, a common heritage. And as you can see from the, the Union Jack, we, we are a British colony. And our queen is still our head of state. So when I was traveling uh, all over these different places, uh, and um, I, um, um, I came across different types of wine. And when I left New Zealand, these were the wines that were available. These religious wines of Blue Nun. Do you remember that? Do you remember Blue Nun? And in, uh, are there any Australians here by any chance? Please escort those Australians out. We don't want them here. Get them. Because they gave us this cold duck. I mean, goodness me, what sort of wine is that? Cold duck. This was a, a red, sparkling, very sweet, cold wine. I mean, well, you know. And anyway... We didn't, this was what I was introduced to when I first started drinking wine. And then, uh, uh, then I did a lot of traveling and I moved around different places and I came uh, to uh, uh, understand a little bit more about New Zealand. And, and while I was away, certain things did happen while I was away. They started planting in the 1980s. This is my mum here, by the way. No, no, it's not really. No. <laughs> and so... Uh, uh, and it's like a chain gang. We got everyone out there planting vines in Marlborough. And it was in the 1980s that things come to fruition and Marlborough was a, a then becoming a center for uh, growing Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, it became a world beater. And those very strong, very aromatic and screw caps. Wow, fantastic, yeah? Very strong. Very aromatic, pungent aromas of Sauvignon Blanc, yes? Is what New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, so, excuse me. I have to drink it. I will have to drink that. Is what New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is well known for. And in fact, why did it become so popular? Because in uh, England at the time, they wanted a, uh, uh, a particular wine to pair with Japanese cuisine. 
and they chose Sauvignon Blanc as the wine to pair with Japanese cuisine. And that is how it became so popular worldwide because of this. And, uh, and that phenomenon, now we've got fantastic vineyards. Look at that. This is my vineyard? No, it's not. It's a, it's a lovely, beautiful scenery of New Zealand. Clean, green, wonderful place. And this is what uh, New Zealand is growing now. These beautiful vineyards down to the, down to the rivers, the slopes, as everyone knows, and um, who, who consumes wine and, and enjoys drinking wine. Uh, slopes are very important. And uh, I was thinking before about James and his problem solving. And, and when I solve problems, this is how I solve problems, yes? <laughs> Yeah. So, so maybe James and I can have a talk later. So we've got some fantastic vineyards in New Zealand and the, the, this vibrant, uh, zesty, effervescence type of, 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 uh, of wine that you've got in New Zealand and Sauvignon Blanc with this lovely, sharp and acidic characteristics is changing. I mean, and back in 1968, uh, 69, we would consume... Um, probably 119 litres of beer a year in New Zealand. Four and a half litres of wine. And uh, when we got to 79, we were consuming 11 litres of wine, and now we're doubling that. We're now consuming over 23 litres of wine a year in New Zealand. And if I go back to New Zealand, I see supermarkets with shelves and shelves of Sauvignon Blanc. I come to Hong Kong, I see shelves and shelves of rice and soy sauce. But New Zealand, I've got Sauvignon Blanc. It's a, it's a fantastic, uh, whoops, a fantastic uh, uh, wine. We do have chateaus there. And interesting enough, this is Mud House just out the side of our, outside of Christchurch. And uh, only New Zealand would do this. We call those trees, they look like lovely palm trees, don't they? We call them cabbage trees. <laughs> I mean, where did that come from? So we have this uniqueness about us. And I think this really goes over into our wine as well. Every New Zealander goes on his big OE, overseas experience. They leave New Zealand, the last one to leave New Zealand, please turn the light out, really, that's what happened, yeah? So we all leave and we all go, and I went, the same thing, off to Australia. There we were, g'day, how you going? And we changed our accent, yeah? <laughs> we came back and my mother says, where the hell have you been, you know? Oh, I've been in Australia, mum. <laughs> so we, uh, uh, we went over to Australia, and then from there I travelled to other parts. But the Sauvignon Blanc, from those New Zealanders who were traveling, they came back to New Zealand and they brought back all those different ideas and uh, love for those particular wines. I mean, in France, they say, oh, I'll have a uh, poulet fumé. And I'll have a censeur. But in New Zealand, we have a Sauvignon Blanc, mate. Give us a Sauvignon Blanc. So the dairy industry in New Zealand had a lot to do with the, the rise of Sauvignon Blanc in that because we're so used to producing uh, liquids like this in, in steel containers under refrigeration. And this is how they first started producing Sauvignon Blanc. They would then uh, use those ideas uh, to uh, make this particular wine into the characteristic that it was. Young winemakers, this was... Did you see the resemblance? No. So, uh, uh, winemakers, they went to different countries. They obviously went to North America, they went to Europe, um, they went to Australia. And they brought back all these fantastic ideas. And they started to then change the way that Sauvignon Blanc is now being uh, looked upon and being tasted. All those pungent aromas and flavors that you've got in Sauvignon Blanc now. Just a second. <laughs> yes, they're still there. But they're changing. And they are moving a little bit more to finesse. A little bit more complexity now. And you'll see that this is happening. So this old and new world is coming together now. We've got this change of uh, these young winemakers who want to make a difference. And we've got these uh, old style wines that uh, are run in, within New Zealand and large companies that are changing. So, the BYO in New Zealand. BYO, bring your own. Bring your own. All this liquor licensing changed the way that we started to look at wine in New Zealand ourselves. And that happened in the 1970s. We started to then be able to bring wine into the restaurant. You weren't able to do that previously. So that had a big uh, change on the way that Sauvignon Blanc was then introduced to the New Zealand culture as well. So we had these people going overseas. We had young winemakers coming back. We had this new and old mix. And we had these 
this BYO uh, restaurants opening up. And we had this Kiwi ingenuity, this number eight wire can do anything. And that was happening quite a lot within the country as well. And it's always been part of the country. Then we got this organics. When I came back, it was all about organics and biodynamics. You bury your manure in a, in a horn somewhere and then you dig it up again a, 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 a years later and then you spread it around. I mean, what, I don't know why, why they do this, but this is, and you look at the sun, this is a good root day, an earth day, a flower day. All these things come into it as well. So biodynamics was a big thing and is becoming more, uh, and organics are becoming more involved in, in the growing of wine. We, we, this, there you go, there's the sheep that someone asked that before. And uh, we've got uh, these now grazing in our vineyards. And obviously the screw cap, and that came in the 1970s. Really that was something that revolutionized wine. And uh, has, has, has had an enjoyable time now that I can screw this cap back on and take it home. Small vineyards have been rising and getting, uh, getting good names and you get a lot of great wines up in Marlborough and uh, around the Nelson Bay areas which are looking at Sauvignon Blanc and most people now know Sauvignon Blanc and Marlborough as being one of the best places for Sauvignon Blanc wine. So these small wineries and they may be just a small little house like that um, and going back to the natural terroir of the region is so important and this is what's in this bottle. It's my home. It's, it's what I believe is what is New Zealand. It's giving me what I remember what New Zealand was like. This freshness, this flavor. So, everyone, I suppose, have heard of Cloudy Bay. That was probably the first Sauvignon Blanc that burst onto the market. And then, 2013, 2015, and 2016, Sauvignon Blanc has been voted the best Sauvignon Blanc in the world. Globally. So, in, uh, we've had uh, uh, the crossings, 2013, best Sauvignon Blanc in the world. Uh, Ruapua, 2015, and this year, a Kim Crawford, uh, 2016, the best Sauvignon Blanc in the world. So, we must be doing something right in our country. Oh, well, not, well, my country. But I'd love you all to come to my country because I'm very proud of my country. And uh, we had a big negotiation just, I think it was this year or so, about that flag there and what it was going to look like. And I'm so pleased we kept that because that's just so close to my heart. Imagine living in this environment. This is just so beautiful. We, we've got this fantastic clean and green uh, environment there for growing great grapes. Every winemaker wants to make good wine. And now with the, the, the rise of this uh, uh, of Sauvignon Blanc into um, uh, where it is today, and it's continuing to move up. It's not, I mean, it's not going to drop. It's going to continue to move. So into the sunset, what do I see? I see the future of Sauvignon Blanc getting even bigger and better and more finesse that's going to happen more complexities you're going to start using more oak which was unheard of before and now we're using uh, oak and rather than stainless steel so we've got this coming into play also and what do I ask do I see in the future me lying here like this <laughs> after a, 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 an evening drinking with my friends so I can, I can look at the journey that I had when I left the country and when I came back 27 years later and looking at how Sauvignon Blanc has developed and moved as much as I have. So I would like to think that I've got complexity, <laughs> I've got finesse, and I've got a zest for life. So thank you very much. <laughs>